Hello and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Nurse Alyssa and today we're going to be discussing if all infected wounds actually need antibiotics. But first, if you could hit that subscribe button, it would be greatly appreciated as it truly does help my channel. So let's get started. So do all infected wounds need antibiotics? The short answer here is no, okay? When people think of infection, they think of that deep spreading infection, fevers, um, all, all the signs that come with infection, but no, for wounds, not every single wound that's infected actually needs an antibiotic. And there's ever a misconception with a lot of doctors, a lot of physicians, um, they'll look at a wound and they're like, oh, it's infected. We, we need to uh, start treatment right away. And it's like, okay, let's use what we have, okay? So there is um, a tool, it's called Nerds and Stonies, okay? So I'm gonna show you that here. I just wanna make this screen a little bit smaller so you can see this. So this is a Nerds and Stony chart and it's to help you determine infection. And I really, really wish a lot more people knew about this. Even as a wound care specialist, it was quite some time before I ever learned about this. Isn't that quite crazy? I was working in wound care for probably four years before I ever knew about this chart. Okay. I kind of, I knew the difference, but it wasn't explained like this. Okay. That's why I'm sharing this with you guys, because it is just such an easy way to tell, okay, is it a deep spreading infection or is it a, just a local infection? With local infections, we only need to treat them with a topical antibiotic, antimicrobial. Okay. It's not an antibiotic. It's an antimicrobial for the bacteria. So it actually goes in to the skin. It absorbs into the skin about three milliliter, millimeters. Okay. Um, whereas when you have a deep spreading infection and you go for the antibiotics, that's system wide. Okay. So we're going to look at this chart here and I'm going to explain it here for you a little bit, but if you want a full in depth of this chart, exactly, please check out my link here. I will link it and, um, I fully go over this, but I will go over it quickly here. So local infection. Okay. Stands for nerds. Okay. Your nerds. This is an antimicrobial treatment. So it's a non-healing. There's increased exudate. It could be red, bleeding. There's debris in the wound, okay? So you might have like little sluffy material and there's an odor to it. So if we have any three of these, we can treat it, okay? Because it's clinically infected, a local infection, but it's clinically infected. So if we have three of these signs or more, we can treat it with an antimicrobial. Now for our deep spreading infection, so our stonies, now this we would need to treat with an antibiotic, okay? So it makes it very easy. You just check mark which ones you have, and then you see. Now, sometimes you have one from this category, two from this category. We need three from either side to be clinically infected, okay? So when we're looking at the deep spreading infection, we have size increase, temperature increase. So that's where you can feel that it's warm, okay? Now they do have the infrared thermometers. I absolutely love these because you can take the temperature on one side and you're going to take it on the bilateral side, so on the opposite side of the body, and compare it, okay? You can compare it to tissue around. See what the comparison is. Does it have an increased temperature, okay? Can you probe to bone? So when you're using your cotton tip applicator, um, assessing the wound, can you touch bone? new breakdown, okay? So this could be new breakdown around the wound 
or it could be around the outside of the wound. So satellite lesions. A lot of times when we have a uh, deep spreading infection, we'll get, you'll have a wound here and then you'll get, get a little start of a wound out here somewhere. It's a satellite lesion. That's a good indication of a deep spreading infection, okay? Um, do we have redness or swelling, okay, around the wound, okay? Increased exudate, okay? So increased drainage. Um, is there a smell? If you have any three of these, that is clinically infected and you need an antibiotic, okay? So see how this chart works? It's so simple to use and it shows if it's clinically infected, whether we should be treating it or not, um, or just doing the wait and see method, okay? Because sometimes, um, yes, a, a wound will be in the inflammatory phase. It's red, it's kind of swollen, but it, it gets out of that phase, okay? So we have to have three on either side and then we treat it. So what do we treat a local infection with? If we don't use an antibiotic, what are we using? So we're using an antimicrobial, okay? What is that you might ask? Well, all these lovely words on this screen, chlorhexidine, povidone iodine, honey, silver, PHMB, um, acetic acid, which is vinegar, um, methylene blue, okay? And with gentian violet, these are all antimicrobials. We have so many to choose from if we have a local infection. So which one is the best? What do we choose? Why do we choose it? Um, honestly, you have to go through somebody's history, medical history, and see what is best for them. Um, sometimes we even do swabs, okay, of the wound. What type of bacteria do we have? I know whenever I see green drainage, if I see green drainage, whatsoever. You want to know what I'm going to? Acetic acid, okay? Now, so many, I've seen this so many times. I have a doctor refer someone to me and they're on an antibiotic because they have this green drainage. Honestly, the antibiotic is not ever needed. Green drainage is cleared up so quickly, at least within two weeks with acetic acid. Okay, it's diluted. I will make sure to link it here, how to uh, use acetic acid. So linked right here. Um, but it works like that is my go-to for green drainage. It clears it up so well without antibiotics. Antibiotics wreak havoc on our system, okay? Yes, sometimes we need them, but if we can go without the antibiotics, that is the way to go. Okay. We have all these options. We just have to figure out which one is best for us. So I will link another video here um, to determine which antimicrobial is best in whatever cases. Okay. So I will link that here of how to choose the best antimicrobial. Um, but that is all I have for this video, guys. I hope you did find it um, very helpful in determining whether or not you actually ever need an antibiotic, okay? So like I said, that's all I have for this video. I hope to catch you in my next one. Bye for now.